Hello, I'm David Cox. I am the segment director for laboratory products at Corning Life Sciences. I manage the product line management organization responsible for Corning's glass equipment and liquid handling products. Access to lab equipment and consumables has been difficult recently, uh, and the life sciences industry has not been spared from the supply chain challenges that we've seen really across the world. So as a manufacturer, we work very closely with our supply chain partners to obtain raw materials to meet customer demand in a timely manner. But despite the best efforts of our supply chain team and our manufacturing team partners, we still have some shortages that we, will con we expect will continue into 2022. In order to mitigate this, we've been aggressively expanding manufacturing capacity and instituting programs to retain labor so that when those raw materials do show up, we are able to quickly convert them into products that customers need as quickly as we can. Laboratories should think about planning their purchases of laboratory equipment from a couple of different perspectives. There's the timing perspective. Uh, and from that perspective, given the supply chain constraints that we've seen, I think it is really important that customers who are thinking about replacing or updating their laboratory equipment reach out earlier than they normally would to some of their sales representatives to inquire about product availability and even consider placing orders earlier than they normally would. If they're facing challenges in finding the product, maybe they would have to reach out to additional channel partners or even directly to the supplier of the equipment, look for alternative ways to obtain the product. That they need. From a product selection perspective, it's important to think not only about the price of the equipment, but about the total cost of ownership, the reputation of the supplier, and the support that that supplier will provide you after you purchase the product. Manufacturers sometimes offer similar products uh, and it's difficult for customers to differentiate. So I would recommend considering four aspects before making a purchase. The first aspect would be product specifications. So consumables and equipment that perform the same function often have pretty different specifications and it's really worth considering what are the specific needs of your lab and how do those specifications match those needs. The second consideration is the footprint that the piece of equipment is going to take in your lab. Lab bench space is always at a premium, so it really makes sense to think about uh, where exactly the piece of equipment is going to go and how it's going to fit. The third consideration that is really new in the COVID area is limiting the usage of high-touch surfaces. So recently we've seen that personal or benchtop equipment are becoming more popular in labs that are trying to limit the number of people that are touching high touch areas in shared equipment. The fourth aspect to consider is compatibility of consumables. There are many suppliers of consumables in the market, but only the suppliers of the consumables and the equipment can ensure compatibility of the whole system. Take, for example, the automatic pipetters and pipette tips. All Corning pipetters are calibrated for Corning pipette tips, and we guarantee the accuracy of the system in individual certificates of quality. A final thing to consider when choosing the right laboratory equipment partner is the support that the manufacturer will provide you when you need either product support or extra help on an application or a technical question. And I think this is one area where Corning really differentiates. We help really minimize the cost of ownership of the product by providing very quick support and having our scientific supported customer service team answer any technical product questions or application support needs that you might have.